Hello there. My name is Sofia. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Uptim. And in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can run Uptim and integrate it into CI CD, specifically how to run it from GitHub CI, and also using automated tests in real devices in the cloud. So a quick overview on uh, what's Uptim and how it works. Uh, Uptim focuses on measuring client-side uh, mobile performance. So as you can see in these slides, we're mostly um, looking into measuring how the app is using uh, how much CPU, memory, battery, rendering times on the client side, how uh, are the loading times, if there are any crashes, um, anything that will basically affect uh, the user experience. Um, different from uh, the traditional performance testing tools, a low testing tool that will focus on server side performance, uh, understanding backend um, response times, database response times and the like, for example, JMeter. And also uh, with Uptim, you can introduce some network simulation, which will affect the, the performance of the app. Uh, for example, 3G, 4, 4G, or 5G network. So we focus on mobile experience by measuring mobile performance. Uptim is cross-platform. Uh, we work with any type of app, but most of the metrics and the value that we provide is on native apps, so Android and iOS. Um, some characteristics of Uptim, it doesn't require SDK, so you don't have to install anything extra. You just run your app with Uptim and we're able to capture a lot of metrics for you. And also, it's also very easy to learn, so anyone in the team can actually start understanding uh, your app performance and measuring over time how um, the different metrics uh, change. Of course, it really depends on the device you're testing, so we should recommend having a subset of devices where you're always running your tests and tracking over time how the performance is. We measure different metrics uh, in both app, device, and network performance. I'm going to go into more details um, as part of the demo. This is an example of an app team report. And today, as I mentioned, I'm going to focus on how uh, to integrate app team into a pull request, run it from CI CD. I'm going to be using um, GitHub. And as part of the demo, uh, app team will uh, install uh, the app that I'm going to be testing in real devices in the cloud using AWS device farm. And I'm also going to be adding some pass fail criteria to the metrics so you can see what happens if uh, any of my criteria defined uh, is not met. It will actually fail the test and also the pipeline. So let's jump into the demo. As I mentioned for GitHub, uh, we actually uh, have a, a GitHub action available in the marketplace. Uh, this basically uses uh, Optim CLI, which is our solution to run Optim along with automated test. So while Optim is uh, measuring performance and monitoring the app and device, you can be running an Appium test, Expresso test, for example, in, in your app. The way it works, it will require a YAML file that we're going to show you in a while. And also, uh, as optional, you can define your own pass-fail criteria. So potentially, if a response time is higher than you expected, or the memory usage in one device is higher uh, than expected, you can fail the pipeline. In order to use the CLI, you will need a workflow, a workflow sorry, uh, file similar to this. When you add uh, a job that will basically just call our action uh, as part of the configuration, um, this is not required because we provide also the provisioning of real device in the cloud. But if you want to use your own AWS account, you can do it by changing the, the GitHub uh, secrets here. And uh, also you need an app, uh, Optim IPA key that is provided to you when you sign up to Optim. I'm going to be running uh, the, the Optim uh, action as part of a workflow demo that I created. So this is my repo where I have the workflow file I just share with you. And basically, uh, I'm going to show it to you, this one. Basically, in this workflow, you can see that um, it will trigger the pipeline if on uh, push, I add a new tag that matches 
basically anything starting with D or uh, any branch that starts with release, right? So what I'm gonna be doing now, I check out this um, repo locally. I'm gonna do a change uh, in one of the files on the repo. I'm gonna push that change and that will trigger the uh, app team uh, action and running the test automatically. So let's jump into that. I have it locally. So you can see here I have uh, I have my APK in this bin folder. I also have some automated tests and two uh, files that I'm gonna be opening, for example, the threshold file. I'm just gonna modify um, the file and save and the change, uh, push it to my repo. So in this case, this threshold file, I'm gonna explain it in a bit, but basically for each uh, of the metrics that Aptin captures, you can select your password criteria. So in this case, it will fail if there's more than one uh, crash. I'm gonna change that to zero. So I want my um, pipeline to fail and also the output of uh, the test that Aptin provides to show a warning if there's at least one crash during the test. So I did that change and I save it. And now I'm gonna push it to the repo with a new tag and that will trigger uh, the pipeline and it will run uh, up team automatically. So let's first add the change. I'm gonna add a new commit. Message is change crash count to one plus zero, sorry. There we go. And uh, as I said, I'm gonna create a new tag. So that will be part of my, uh, will trigger my um, my workflow. So tag 006, and I'm just gonna push that change uh, origin and I wanna, yeah. So my name, user, and also uh, it here, great. So as you can see, a new tag was created. And then if we go back to our repo and our project, if I go under actions, uh, you can see here a new job uh, is, there's a new run. Uh, if I click on it, you can see that, uh, well, it's basically getting all the artifacts necessary. It's gonna install our CLI. It will uh, upload both the APK and my zip file, which contains my automated test to AWS device farm, where the real devices are. I'm gonna install my app, run the test on the devices while capturing all the performance metrics. So as you can see here, both the APK and zip file are being uh, uploaded. This is where the CLI uh, started. One of the devices were busy, that's why it was not, was not selected. And you can see started test with two devices and you get the link to the actual uh, device from run. These tests are gonna take about uh, six to seven minutes to run. And you can see here I'm inside device farm. That's the name of my test. And two devices were selected. I can click on uh, on any of them and probably it's just setting up uh, the device. That's why I don't have yet any, any data yet. Uh, maybe in this case, it will show the device that is, yeah, it's starting there. So while this runs, uh, let me go back. Wait, sorry about that. So while this runs, you can see it here. I'm gonna explain you how the CLI works. So the action that we have in the marketplace under the hood, under the hood we'll use our CLI. Optim CLI uh, basically can be installed in Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and it requires two, um, two files. One is the config file. I actually have it here so I can show it to you. This is how you configure your test. This is what I use for this test that I'm, I'm running right now. You can uh, define the name of your test. Uh, you have to put the path to where the uh, app is, the app that gonna, is gonna be tested. So in this case, uh, it's inside the bin folder of my project. It's an IPK, I'm running an, a test on Android. 
the package name of the app, specifications for the test runner. So I'm using, for this specific demo, I'm using Appium Test NG. I created my test in Appium, uh, the test that I automated on this app. It's um, It goes for a product list and check uh, clicks on a product and then adds the product to a cart. So I already automated that with Appium. What I'm doing here, I compile those tests and I put them inside this zip file. This zip file is what AWS Device Farm requires to actually run the automated test. So we are uh, given this as part of um, uh, uh, our uh, test, our automated test. And then you can specify the version of Appium that you used. And in this case, because I use test ng, the test runner. Then we have a threshold YAML that I actually modified before as part of this demo. This is where you define your password criteria for all the metrics that, as I show you, how long the tests are going to run on each device, and then which devices you want to choose for this specific test. There are different ways you can do this. In this case, I'm specifically uh, targeting these three devices with uh, Android OS 10, 9, and 8. You can just put OS and it will choose any device that is available with OS 10. Uh, or you can choose specific devices as I did in this case. And then some specific configuration for AWS device farm, like the project when you want it to be uploaded if you're using your own account. And if you want to use a uh, network simulation as, as I'm using in this case, I'm using a 3G good connection that I previously configured and you can select it like this. This is a threshold file that I already show you. So for each metric that Aptin captures, for example, CPU max, you can use both warning and moderate thresholds. The warning thresholds will return a fail. So it will actually fail the pipeline. Um, in this case, if the CPU uh, usage during the test, the maximum it gets over 90%, it will actually fail my test and my pipeline. If I use a moderate threshold, in this case, it will be between 70 and 90, it will not fail the pipeline, but it will show me a warning as part of the results of the test and inside the Aptim report, okay? And I can also use thresholds for uh, response times or what we call measure um, events time taken. So for example, in this test, because I'm adding an item to a card, I wanna measure uh, that that uh, action of clicking on add to card doesn't take more than one second uh, from the end user perspective, okay? So these are the two files that are required for the CLI to run, and also you need your automated test inside a zip file and the app that you are testing. Same configuration for iOS. The difference is you're going to have an APA here. Your package name, of course, is going to be a bit different, but all the rest is the same and you choose uh, iOS devices. So let's go back to my uh, workflow. So as you can see, the test started. They run for about three minutes in one device and the test already finished in the Sony Xperia and downloading my artifacts and the same for the uh, the other device. Let's go back here. Oops. And uh, as you can see, the output is, uh, so two tests were completed. Total duration was uh, five uh, minutes. The This is the output of the actual automated test. So the test passed, which is good to check that the actual uh, you know, Appium test didn't fail during the test. We wanna make sure that we're actually testing uh, and doing the whole flow automated. And then you have for each device, you get a link to the Appium report. And also here you get this table when you see for each threshold that you define in the YAML that I showed you before, what's the result. So you, as you can see, the crash count was one. My threshold was more than zero. So that's why you see this result as warning. And that's why you see this fail as well as part of this workflow because I had actually three warnings. So this will three, uh, three uh, uh, of my criteria failed. Then you have this moderate and then you have pass based on what I define. Let's open one of the repos and see um, what happened. So in this case, I opened uh, the report that run on the Samsung device. So you can see there was a crash. It exceeded my threshold. That's why it appears here. I can uh, access it through the error section. This is the crash where you see the red warning. It means there was a crash. 
these are exceptions that are thrown by the app that we also capture and you can actually have it available for a developer to check. But this was not actually a cross in this cause. In this case, it was caused by a divide by zero. Uh, this is of course um, created by us, but this would be uh, where you see more details on a crash or an ANR. Uh, well, in this case, there wasn't actually, there wasn't any rendering, so it was zero. My warning was at 15 frames per second. You can see also my add to cart event took almost two seconds, so it failed. And if I go down here, I can see all the metrics uh, that were captured, and I can actually see, for example, the add to cart. Uh, again, this happened uh, during my test that I, uh, from the automated test, I clicked on add to cart uh, in the product view. And because it took more than two seconds, uh, one second, sorry, it, uh, it shows as a failed. I can also click on that specific event. And this will basically calculate all the other metrics for that specific time frame. So when I click, how was the memory? How was CPU? How was frames per second? I can see that if I just zoom in. And then for the whole test, I can see where there was a peak in CPU. Uh, at some point, I can also zoom in here. The memory was also going up at the same time. You also get the CPU uh, of the device. This is not only your app. All the other metrics are specifically for your app, but it's good to have under control and see if the device is not under stress. There's also a video that uh, can be downloaded uh, as part of the output. So you can see also what happened during the test. And here you have all the logs uh, to download and to have more details on the metrics capture. One, uh, for each test, there's one report that is generated for each device. Um, so, sorry, each device where it runs generates each one report. So if I click here, I can see it as well for the Google Pixel. And again, for these metrics and the specific threshold that I will use it, I can see the results and the graphs. So that's what I had uh, for today, uh, how to run the app team uh, action that it's available in the marketplace. Uh, if you want to try it, just reach out to us at hello at appteam.com and we are happy to uh, schedule a time to go over it, answer any questions you have and help you get started with uh, automated performance testing in your mobile app. Thank you.